like people are losing it. Feels like people's fuses are shortening as each year goes by. Feels like people are ruder, angrier, more vulgar, more discourteous than ever before. More prone to losing their temper at the slightest provocation. Welcome to Mad World. Go ahead, pull your gun and put a bullet through my head! Everybody! Come take my hand, this world will take together! Did those poor sunglasses really deserve that? Fueled by self entitlement, faux righteousness, and identity politics driven outrage. She, fueled by the delusion that the mere act of engaging in maniacal, over the top, emotionally incontinent eruptions makes them right. Is this a prank? Yeah, he won't go away! He yeah, needs to go away! He's the fucking problem! Well, I'm Fuck you! Dream. I didn't see you! To make it. Well, I just asked her if she saw anyone in line. Just go! Just go! That's an adult. You're making it worse! Just go! 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 Just with even public figures now routinely resorting to irate, over-performative temper tantrums. All of a sudden, when it's about our students, they challenge it, the corporations challenge it, the student loan lenders challenge it. That is not right. That is not fair. <laughs> Don't tell me that this is about an a, a condemnation of anti-Semitic remarks. What's all this over the top bouncing about? All of a sudden, I didn't get a single apology. Time is the idea that crying in public and then posting it online automatically validates your complaint. People wonder why we need a union at Starbucks, and I am literally about to quit. <laughs> I don't get accommodations for being neurodivergent. People are yelling at me because I don't have their orders ready. <laughs> they don't know what to do. And a customer was misgendering me tonight. I get scheduled for 25 hours a week. 25 hours a week? Oh, you poor baby. <laughs> this absurd shared belief that political change can be achieved simply by having the loudest social media adult hissy fit. Yeah! The Karen meme does reality a disservice by implying that all these public freakouts are just a fad that manifests itself in middle-aged white women when certain demographics hopped up on racial grievance narratives seem more likely than ever before to lash out violently. Yo. Audrey, huh? So, so, what's oh, so you like just... being racist, right? Oh, yeah. Really? Yeah. <laughs> you think that's something to be proud of, right? No, no. No, no. Apologize. I'm sorry. But say what? Yeah. 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 That's it. Let's do one more apology. Just get away. Because there's no fixing this. Just get the fuck away. We're seeing the legitimization of schizopathological reactions to any perceived slight. Are you experiencing this phenomenon in your lives? Because I know I am in mine. Tell me a story in the comments. You also see the manifestation of this madness on the roads and highways. People driving dangerously, then immediately resorting to violence. Road rage across the country is on the rise. Every 17 hours, someone is shot during a road rage incident across America. There is a shocking rise all across the country. What in the world is going on? Over the past 15 years, road rage related fatal car accidents in America have soared by 500%. This isn't just about Karens, and it's not even solely political. This societal rage and madness seems to be contagious. How do we maintain our civility and sanity during times of unprecedented insanity? Well, an important part of maintaining peace of mind is, of course, through exercise and nutritional supplements. Which brings me to my friends at Black Forest Supplements who have been kind enough to sponsor to this video. This is NMN, which I've been taking for a couple of weeks now. It's a derivative of the B vitamin, niacin. NMN works as a precursor to NAD+, a compound that plays a crucial role in energy production, muscle regeneration, metabolism, and gene expression. For me personally, it's really helped at clearing that 
you know, brain fog, increasing memory sharpness and focus. And yes, even putting me in a better mood. Boosting overall energy without having to feel like a junkie addled up on caffeine and energy drinks all day. Don't believe me though, go and check out some of the five star reviews where other customers talk about how it helped improve their sleep, cleared brain fog, gave them a significant energy boost. Older customers have noted massive reductions in things like joint pain and better endurance and stamina during workouts. They ship to virtually any country in the world. And if you're not happy with the product, there's a 30 day money back guarantee. You can't lose! And again, in these times of cancel culture, it's never been more important to support great companies like Black Forest Supplements who support creators like me. So again, I've been taking this for about two weeks now. It's really given me a boost and it can give you a massive boost too. Link's in the description box below. And if you lucky devils use the discount code Paul, you get another 10% off. Now back to the video. Seems like emotional incontinence, pathological behavior and mental illness is all being glorified by our poisoned culture. There's been an explosion in young people developing tics and Tourette's by proxy. Simply by watching others who exhibit these behaviors in TikTok talk videos. An influx three or even fourfold from a year ago in what doctors are now calling functional tick disorder. Flailing movements of their arms, even self-injurious, so they're, you know, striking themselves. They're saying entire phrases, you know, swearing. It appears to have given them a kind of Tourette syndrome. They're ticking uncontrollably. <laughs> Diagnosed with both Tourette's and a functional neurological disorder, Metallica sometimes has no control over what she does and says. So if watching TikTok videos of other people displaying functional tick disorder could then lead to the viewer suffering from functional tick disorder, could the prevalence of emotionally incontinent public meltdown videos going viral on social media actually be causing the spread of some kind of weird societal virus that makes people more likely to engage in their own emotionally incontinent public meltdowns? <laughs> You also have elements of the neurodiversity movement and the mental health industry, which have completely departed from the idea that mental illness is a private problem that should be treated with discretion, and embraced and promoted the notion that it should be externalized and even celebrated. The number of people diagnosed with autism has jumped 787% in just two decades. And yeah, while much of that is due to wider recognition, how much of it is due to misdiagnosis? How much of it is people labeling themselves with the form of mental illness because our warped culture has made it into some kind of cool status symbol. I mean, how many times have you heard someone say, yeah, I'm a bit autistic, when in reality, they're not autistic. They're either trying to legitimize or justify their bad thoughtless behavior, or they're attempting to stand out, to be unique, to present themselves as more complex, more interesting than their humdrum lives actually suggest they are. Of course, mental health problems are real and horrible from the people who genuinely suffer from them, but how many people are pretending to suffer from mental health problems to make themselves look edgy or eccentric, or to justify their aggressive, emotionally incontinent temper tantrums. Why? Why? Studies show increases in schizophrenia are linked to our increasingly permissible attitudes towards drugs, particularly cannabis. People diagnosed with schizophrenia are four to six times more likely to commit a violent crime compared to the general population. Is it therefore really a surprise that leftists run cities, which have allowed their streets to become open air block parties for crackheads and stoners, have turned into such crime ridden dystopian hellholes that it's almost a cliche at this point. This laissez -faire fair approach to drug enforcement is a factory conveyor belt for the creation of desperate schizos, rapaciously plundering the general public to fund their habit. Mad people commit violent crimes. The more mad people, the more violent crimes. It's not rocket science. <laughs> Instead of disincentivizing drug use, cities like San Francisco continue to pursue insane policies that encourage a cycle of dependency and addiction. San Fran just voted to allow privately funded drug injection sites. Same in New York. Despite the fact that drug dealers just congregate around these sites, merely exacerbating the problem. How are you gonna solve a drug addiction problem by creating more drug addicts? Thanks to drug-fueled soaring levels of crime, 
Wealthy residents in LA are purchasing protection dogs that cost as much as high-end Mercedes cars. Some trainers are selling dogs for upwards of $150,000. LA is beginning to resemble third world levels of frenzy and disorder. In my 34 years in the LAPD, I had never seen this type of criminal behavior in such large group. These gangs are from the South Los Angeles area, and many of them are rivals from different sects. With the recent 8% surge in crime as home robberies become commonplace, protection dogs are becoming a coveted home security asset with elitists willing to pay silly money just to feel that bit safer. LA cops are so stretched dealing with serious violent crime. They say they can no longer deal with 911 calls about homelessness and mental health related issues. This means public defecation. Ugh. Drunkenness and antisocial behavior go unimpeded. A similar approach is also taking place in New York City, San Francisco, Portland, Olympia, Washington. The mentally ill and the mad are taking over the streets of America. No! The lawless opioid plagued area of East Baltimore witnessed shocking scenes recently that looked like something out of a war zone. When a stolen Hyundai hit another vehicle at an intersection, causing both cars to crash into a building, which then partially collapsed. With crime running rampant thanks to years of Democrat misrule, Baltimore City's population collapsed to the lowest level in a century. New York City, Los Angeles, Chicago, Miami, Boston, Seattle, San Francisco, San Diego, Minneapolis, St. Paul, Philadelphia, and Washington, D.C. shrank by a combined 900,000 people in 2021. The trend is continuing beyond the pandemic, so it's not just lockdowns or work from home that's fueling it. Look at Austin, Texas, usurped by people fleeing California and other blue states. But then they bring all the worst aspects of those states with them. Austin police officers are quitting in droves. The city council caved to BLM's demented demand they defund the police. Now Austin is turning into LA with unruly criminal mobs wreaking havoc. Hundreds of people taking over a major intersection, doing spin outs and even shooting fireworks at police. <laughs> Complete chaos Saturday night in the heart of Texas. Hundreds of people with no regard for the law taking over a major Austin intersection. Doing donuts in between crowds. Overwhelming and shooting fireworks at police. With cities in general becoming basket case havens. The crazed drug addiction, violent crime and degenerate, increasingly bizarre schizophrenic behavior. Many Americans across the entire country are fleeing the madness. Get early access to videos, exclusive live streams, and personally DM me. You've seen how much I get demonetized all the time. Well, this is how you support me. By subscribing at pauljosephwatson.locals.com. Please click the link in the description.